Hi, I'm Marla Dobbs Hawkins. I am a visual artist and an arts educator teaching at Southeast Raleigh Magnet High School. I've long been interested in using SEL and connecting it with arts, how social emotional learning connects to self-expression, whether it's writing or visual art, for helping students and really helping adults and everyone to express themselves and understand themselves and understand others. The project we'll be working on today is showing different ways to create art combining text and visuals to explore identity. These are projects I've done with young students in the classrooms. I've done it in workshops with all ages, including adults, where I do workshops around the idea of expressive arts, which is combining two or more art forms to understand yourself and process ideas. This project enables students to not only understand themselves in terms of social emotional learning, but also it works through an equity lens in terms of having students understand what makes their identity, all the complexities of it, and in turn they can understand what makes up other people's identities and how complex they are. The way I first came to making this style of art was combining my love of writing and specifically poetry with visual arts. Uh, several years ago I had gone through several uh, traumatic experiences that I really needed to process and began writing poetry and sharing it in public and then decided to, while inspired by the story quilts of Faith Ringgold, combine the, the two together in a visual poetry quilt, and so I call it visual poetry. Students love expressing who they are and doing these kind of projects. What they really want though and what they need is to be able to do it in their own way. So what's great about this project is giving them lots of different options for how they create the visuals and also guiding them through different ways to write so that they feel comfortable. At this point, to introduce the activity, you might want to speak with students about identity by showing them some different artists who do artwork around identity. Some work that I like to show that inspires me. Um, first of all, an artist named Bart Cooper, I was really attracted to his art because he combines text and visuals and he has a hero series where he took uh, women who were his heroes, put them in contemporary clothing. These are famous women, but he put them in different drew them in different clothing and used their words, their own text around the image. So that could lead to a discussion about identity. Another artist you might want to show is um, Amy Sherald, who does the grayscale portraits. And that could really lead into a discussion around why her portraits are in grayscale and why the emphasis is more on the personality of the people with the clothing and the colorful backgrounds. So you could think about how talking about how identity is more than just what you what you see on the outside surface level but what is internal and that could really lead to a discussion of the next piece this is the part where you're going to do some writing with students it would be good to introduce the idea of identity around sharing poems there's plenty of i am poems out there or poems about where i'm from when students are writing poetry or thinking about writing, and it doesn't have to be poetry, it could just be words in general, but it would be really helpful for them if they understand that the most enjoyable poems are very specific and they're not generic words that anyone could have written, but they're very much about detailed personal experiences and they share sensory words so that the reader or the listener or the viewer can really understand the experience as if they were there themselves. If you share your own personal experiences with students, they just really connect with that, um, not only connect with you, but also feel much more comfortable with writing about their own true experiences. So this is a part, point where you might want to think about writing your own ahead of time to share. I had written a poem years ago that was the inspiration for one of my art quilts and um, I will share that piece. It's about my experiences growing up in a mixed race background and, and all how that shaped my identity. 
What are you? The question I dreaded to hear. Growing up, I couldn't understand how it wasn't so clear that I am glazed mixing bowls and wooden rolling pins with grandma's hand carefully making crust for apple pies, teaching me to hand sew with needle and thread and learning to read to granddad through old books with crackling spines and stained pages. I am concrete sidewalks chalked with blue and green hopscotch boards, red brick city buildings, a trade through migration from Southern red clay, low coastal Southern tides and sand dollars. I am conceived as Captain Kirk kissed Uhuru on TV for all to see what was still illegal in parts, forming in womb as Brother Martin tells what he saw from the mountaintop before he rises into the clouds. I am bagels and locks on Saturdays and fried chicken, black eyed peas and greens on Sundays. I am the scent of curry and incense in the Indian store, screeching number seven subway trains, knotty roots combed with green ultra sheen mixed with tears and commands to stop crying before I give you something to cry about. I am Ellis Island dreams drowned out by middle passage screams. I am laying in bed listening to Kind of Blue playing in the other room crackling under the needle while scotch on ice was sip late night because it's finally Friday and payday. I am Saturday morning soul train dancing in front of the TV, 60 minutes of joy, solving the scramble board because I'm Marvin's inner city blues mixed with Shaka's Papillon. I am words of Maya, Gloria, Intizake, wondering why my rainbow isn't enough. I'm Zora's Janie with eyes staring out of windows at starry skies, watching God and dreaming of love. I am timeless. In that poem, I spoke about things that were, or mentioned things that were very specific to my growing up and my experience. And a lot of people, especially younger people, may not know those references, but it's a good time to encourage kids to use experiences that are very specific to them their experience, their interests, and their cultures. This project, when you're introducing it to students, let them know there's so many different ways that they can do this so that they feel comfortable and not intimidated either by the idea of making portraits of themselves or by writing. So for first thinking about portraits, let them know that they can do this in terms of just having an outline of themselves where they actually don't have to have anything in it. They can think about how it doesn't have to actually look like them. It just represents them by having a uh, grayscale, like an Amy Sherald style grayscale, but having colorful sections around it and or even including a photograph of like a black and white photograph on this one that looks nice with the white words around it on a black background. Another thing you want to um, give them choice about is how they write. And they can write a poem and include the whole poem on it, just like this. That's what all of these words are, but they also can just kind of pick out and brainstorm words to go in these different categories and include them around in the concept of the connected pieces that make up who they are. So you would have one section that is really focused on their foundation, what makes up they're, what they're born with, who their family is, their culture, their community, language, even foods that are eaten, things like that. You would have another section about their interests and the things that they care about. And then maybe having another section about their future goals and vision for themselves. The most important thing for you to know about this activity is that it lends itself to all different levels where you can work with the youngest or emerging art students in terms of including a template possibly for them. It could be an outline of the whole body or an outline of a head and the different sections where they just put in the, the key words that they want to more advanced or higher level students or students who feel comfortable where they are doing more involved portraits and doing more involved writing. Circling back to the idea of social emotional learning and the social awareness piece, it would really be great to end up this art activity with a gallery walk where your students get to not only have reflected on themselves, but get to see each other's work and understand each other. You could encourage them to put sticky notes with comments or even questions around the different pieces that they see. and it could lead to a whole new discussion after that. I started this piece, what I do in my classroom is giving students 
tons of supplies and random materials on the table. For every activity, I introduce a theme or an idea, like the theme of this one, this project, but then show them that there's a lot of different ways that they can do it, and I give them a lot of samples and examples, and, and let that be their, work through their creative process, where one thing kind of sparks the next idea. And so that's what actually happened for me in uh, making one of them, trying to make another creative way of doing this. And it's important to let students hear your creative thinking process and how you come up with ideas. It will encourage them to say, okay, you know, I can, I don't have to have my fully formed idea. I can think through things. How I came up with this idea, I wanted to do a show a different way to do it in a more in a creative way. And it started with wanting to just show an outline so that for students who are not comfortable with doing facial features, there's a, wanted to show that you could have an outline of a body and have maybe some different symbols in here. Then I was inspired by the idea of those things that say, you know, if you're trying to find your, the answer you're looking for, say, you know, do you like this? Then try that. Those kind of things with the different lines that lead you in different directions depending on what you choose. So I drew these different lines or I had the idea of the different lines. And then finally, I thought about this is about identity and kind of where you come from. So I need a map in the background to make an interesting background. So I, I found a map of New York State where I grew up. I then actually, you know, thinking about all my different experiences, I kind of spliced in pieces of different maps like Washington, D.C., where my father is from, and my, we used to visit my grandmother, and Durham, where I live now. And so I went in, glued the map down, and actually did like a very thin layer of white, um, watered down white acrylic paint over most of it, except for the parts that I wanted to circle. And I have circled like the, the key areas that were important to me. So from there, I would write on these lines just kind of my, my mind map, my thinking. So things like um, I wrote what, how all of these things influence me. So I kind of wrote, maybe I would write dad and then think about like my, you know, what I think I got from him. Like his, he was kind of like entrepreneurship and um, he was serious, but he loved music, he was really into jazz. So I would write that here and things like that. I would write maybe my um, experiences in different places like here. I went to high school in Manhattan. So I just think about how that, I circled that and how that shaped me. And it can be a really interesting process for students to think about how one thing gets them thinking about the next thing and really kind of a visual seeing what made them who they are. And then even just thinking about the idea of like place made me think about wanting to do kind of a, a universe kind of uh, visual here. So this part that's painted dark blue, I was just gonna kind of, I know I wanted to include the universe idea here. So some kind of stars, that's why I painted that part um, dark so that I could, I'm using some gel pens over the um, dark area to kind of create that idea of the universe and that's pretty much it. I hope this session inspired you and encourages you to try it with your students and get to know them a little bit better through their artwork. It will also help them to maybe explore and understand their identities a little more and to get to know each other.